Good morning, students. Hope all you are well and taking care. Friends, from today, we are going to start a new chapter from your syllabus from the unit Human Physiology. The title of the chapter is Circulation. Under this chapter, Circulation, we are going to discuss in detail about the circulatory system in man and about the components of circulatory system like blood, blood vessels and heart. But before starting with the circulatory system in man and about the components of circulatory system, first we will have to discuss about this term circulation and about some basic things. Now this process, process of circulation, it is essential for uniform distribution of absorbed food material and uniform distribution of respiratory gases throughout the body. Now this process, process of circulation, it is classified or it is divided into two different categories such as the first type of circulation, it is called as intracellular circulation. Now this type of circulation, intracellular circulation, it is observed or it is found in lower and unicellular organisms. Intracellular circulation found in lower unicellular organisms like amoeba and paramecia. Now in this unicellular organisms, the process of circulation, it is completed by the cytoplasm. Therefore, it is also called as cytoplasmic circulation in lower unicellular organisms. The process of circulation, it is called as cytoplasmic circulation because Cytoplasm performs the entry and exit of materials into these organisms. For the second type, it is extracellular respiration, the extracellular circulation. Now this type of circulation, extracellular circulation, it is found in higher animals. in higher animals. Now, we can take example of human beings. In human beings, there is extracellular circulation. That means, the circulation, it takes place outside the cell between the blood capillaries and the cell. In intracellular circulation, the circulation, it takes place inside the cell and cytoplasm is responsible for performing the process. In extracellular circulation, the circulation it takes place outside the cell and in higher animals, you can take the example of human beings. In human beings, the circulation it takes place between blood capillaries and cells which is outside. So, further, this process process of circulation again it is classified into two types you can say this is the second method this is the first method of classification in which we are classified this process process of circulation on the basis of where the process is completed inside the cell or outside the cell now we are going to classify this process process of circulation on the basis of types of fluids which performs this process. Types of fluids. Again, there are two types. First, it is environmental fluids. Environmental fluid circulation. Now, generally, in this type, environmental fluid circulation Water is responsible for performing this process. 
Now, in certain organisms like sponges and hydra, the process of circulation it is completed with the help of water. In sponges, all over the body, there is a presence of small minute pores. But through these small minute pores, with the help of water, the food material and the gases, they are taken in and are given out. Now, so the example is sponges and hydra. Now, in hydra, there is a presence of only one opening. And through this opening, the food material, it is taken in as well as it is given out. So, this is the first type of fluids, that is environmental fluid circulation, where water is mainly responsible. The second type, that is internal fluids. Now, in this type, internal fluids, again, there are two different fluids which performs the process of circulation. And these are blood and lymph. Now, these are the two different ways of classifying this process of circulation. In the first way, we have classified the process of circulation into two types, intracellular circulation and extracellular circulation on the basis of the site of the process. In the second type, we have divided circulation into two types, that is environmental fluid circulation and internal fluid circulation on the basis of the type of fluid which takes part in this process. Now further, we are going to discuss about this internal fluid circulation in which blood and lymph they are taking part in the process of circulation. Now the process of circulation where blood is acting as a circulating fluid, that type of the process of circulation it is called as blood vascular system. And in human beings there is the presence of blood vascular system. And here under this chapter, circulation, we are going to discuss in a detail about the blood vascular system in man. So now, we are going to discuss about the blood vascular system in the body of human beings. So again, this blood vascular system in man, so Blood vascular system. Now, this blood vascular system is a circulatory system where blood is acting as a circulating fluid. And this type of blood vascular system, again, it is classified into two types open type of blood vascular system and close the type of blood vascular system. Now, we are going to discuss about these two different types of circulation. What is the difference between these two types? The first of all, about open type of blood vascular system. Now, in this type, in open type of blood vascular system, the blood does not flow continuously within the blood vessels. But at places, the blood comes out of the blood vessels. So, in this type, open type of blood vascular system, blood does not flow continuously in the blood vessels. Now, in closed type of blood vascular system, the blood always flows within a completely closed system of blood vessels. It never comes out in the blood. It never comes out of blood vessels. With the help of a very simple diagram, we can discuss about these two types. Now what happens? In open type 
type of blood vascular system when the blood suppose this is the artery or blood vessels carrying the blood at few places at some places in the body there is the presence of an empty space there is the presence of a cavity now this cavity it is called as sinuses now when the blood is flowing through this blood vessels at this sinus the blood comes out of the blood vessels into this space into this empty space which is called as sinuses now in this space there is the presence of an organ or a tissue that means in this open type of blood vascular system the tissue or the organ it is completely deep into the blood and then again the blood continues into this blood vessels so here in this open type of blood vascular system the tissue or the organ it is completely deep into the blood so this is a open type of blood vascular system and in this open type of blood vascular system the blood it is called as hemolymph and in this type open type of blood vascular system the transport of materials or the exchange of materials it takes place directly between the blood and the tissue as the tissues are deep into the blood so the second type close the type of blood vascular system in this type the blood flows continuously within the blood vessels it never comes out of the blood vessels and in this type there is no direct contact between blood and tissue cells of us again with the help of a very simple diagram you can study this now this is the artery carrying the blood now this artery it is further it, is, it continue into number of fine capillaries like this now this is a tissue now when the blood through this artery comes into this capillaries then the track the exchange of materials it takes place between the thin wall of this capillaries and the external wall of the tissue so there is no direct contact between the blood and the cells occurs and again this is continued into the vein so in close the type of blood vascular system there is no direct contact between tissue and the blood occurs the exchange of materials it takes place across capillaries and the tissue in open type of blood vascular system there is a direct contact between blood and tissue occurs and the process of circulation it is completed between blood and the cells directly now here in this chapter we are going to discuss in the detail about the closed type of blood vascular system in human beings and in the next session we are going to discuss about the components of closed type of blood vascular system in man thank you